Resilience. I think resilience in organizing the Ultra Mirage is key. If, I, if you tell me, Amir, can you tell me, describe the Ultra Mirage in one word, I'll tell you with it, resilience. Resilience actually defines the Ultra Mirage. I think, you know, particularly for my generation and yours, most of us go through our lives not really being tested. You know, we haven't had to go through a, a war. We're going through something pretty bad right now. But, you know, we haven't had to fight. We haven't had to defend our families physically. And I think maybe for a lot of people, this represents an opportunity just to do something outside of their comfort zone. And that's, that's how it is for me with this race. It's just so ridiculously difficult that I want to try doing it again and again. To be with yourself. C'est des choses où on n'a pas l'habitude, on est toujours parasité par des bruits, maintenant les téléphones, enfin le smartphone, etc. Là, es, bah, tu te retrouves tout seul, tu dois avancer, tu as un objectif. C'est des choses où on n'a vraiment plus l'habitude de vivre dans notre quotidien. Là, tu es, es seul face à toi-même. Et là, tu essayes de... Tu avances, quoi, tout simplement. Quoi. I wanted it to be really, really mentally challenging. And I think, you know, if you do the 100 km, uh, path, uh, it's really kind of the, the mental strength you need to complete this race is, is just extraordinary. I'm really, really pleased to be here. And I think I, don't, I can speak only for myself here. For me, this race, you know, every year, beginning of October, it's, it's something I look forward to. And I think you know, for everybody, this has been a really difficult year. And for me, it was always just a little light at the end of the tunnel to look forward to. And I think you know, when times are tough, and it's tough for everybody, I think we need something in our lives to, to look forward to and anticipate. So yeah, that, that's why I'm here. And it was, uh, yeah, it, was a, it was difficult for me to get here. And uh, I think I'm the only British guy who made it. Um, but I wanted to be here. And I think it just sends a message just to me that, you know, there's hope, there's life, the light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, that's what this represents to me. And I'm really, really pleased to be here. So I came to Tunisia earlier this year, just for holiday. And I mean, I just, I fell in love with the country and I specifically stayed here in Tozer and so I found out about this race actually someone contacted me and I mean it just I actually I've done a desert marathon before and it's my favorite marathon in the whole world just because it's truly like an out-of-body experience being alone in the desert uh, so I was really captivated by this race and just that feeling of again being alone in the desert and uh, and with the heat and everything so I just decided, you know, this is something I had to do. En fait, l'Ultra Mirage, tu viens courir un ultra, mais tu repars avec une famille. On revient découvrir à chaque fois le désert, on revient voir la famille. Ça devient un pèlerinage, j'ai envie de dire, c'est une fête de famille. La première fois que, que Sébastien est revenu euh, de la première édition, je garde beaucoup sa, sa phrase en tête, c'était euh, sa découverte du, du désert. Ça l'a beaucoup marqué, ça l'a changé. Il voulait absolument qu'on qu découvre ça. Donc moi j'ai envie euh, voilà, de, le découvrir, euh, de le découvrir à fond. Et je m'attends bien sûr à de la difficulté, mais je m'attends aussi à être portée par toute cette spiritualité, j'ai envie de dire. Euh, c'est une course solidaire pour moi. Je, je récolte des fonds pour une petite fille euh, qui est polyhandicapée. C'est une motivation extrême. Euh, je ne suis pas toute seule. Organizing an ultra trail in the desert is very, very difficult. When you try to organize an ultra trail during a global pandemic, the COVID-19, it's almost impossible. As you can see, everybody canceled. Now you try to organize an ultra trail in the desert during a global pandemic when a second wave is hitting is out of this world. And I'm really, really glad we pulled it together with the team. I'm not proud, I'm extremely proud. I'm extremely proud. We have never had it easy in the Ultra Mirage. We've never had an easy year. But this year was really another level of course.
20 kilometer checkpoint. And uh, to be honest, I'm feeling pretty nauseous. I think I'm just like, was really nervous at the beginning of the race, but we continue. And I'm now one fifth through this crazy desert race with a mask on too. <laughs> yes, this race is physical. And I do think you need to be um, in a certain type of physical shape to complete it. But I really think it's 80% mental. And like I said, if you can somehow shift your thinking from away from negative thoughts of it being a really tough race and why are you doing this? And I think it requires you to be really focused on simply finishing and getting to certain points. It's not so bad actually, it's okay at the moment, but uh, it, it comes in waves typically in these races. At the moment I'm feeling good, it's probably the, uh, the three double espressos that I had before I started, but uh, as soon as that wears off maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll stop smiling, but at the moment I'm good. The conditions are very, very extreme, it's very, very hot. I mean, 100 kilometers in the dunes, yeah, it's, it's brutal. And, you know, the scenery doesn't change very much. There's very little to distract you. You're in your head the whole time. And mentally, yes, it's really draining. And you cannot cool yourself down. It's very, very hard. So I think physically, maybe not as demanding as some of those races, but mentally, certainly, it's, it's really, really hard. And I think that's, that's the challenge of, of the, uh, the ultra marathon. It's, it's not the physical challenge, it's the mental challenge. J'avais envie de vomir, des frissons. A priori, c'est un coup de chaud. J'explore mon intérieur. Il y a du boulot. J'ai jamais rien vécu de, de tel. C'est la première sensation que m'a donné le, le, ma première visite dans le désert. C'était ce face à face avec soi. C'était vraiment ma recherche. C'était ma quête, en tout cas là. Mais là, pour le coup. Euh, tu es seul, tu en baves, mais tu profites quand même et tu te dis waouh, wow, ouais, je suis un enfant de la terre, un enfant de, 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 de tout ce que j'ai autour de moi et, euh, et c'est euh, une sensation extraordinaire. We've all made it. I'm drinking Coca-Cola for the first time in probably 10 years. And um, honestly, five minutes ago, I thought I was going to give up, but that somehow was not the case. So I definitely wanted to drop out. Like that was a thought that crossed my mind. But I think, you know, once I got to checkpoint two, kilometer 50, I drank a bunch of Coke. The volunteers were taking such good care of me, and it's like, I, you know, I have to go on, I have to move forward. And le matin, j'avais peur. J'avais une peur que j'arrivais pas à, à expliquer. Quoi qu'on me peur, euh, je sais pas, la peur d'un danger, je savais pas. Et euh, on s'est retrouvés dans le sas tous les deux. Euh, bon, voilà, on est parti. J'ai dit bonne route. Euh, moi, je vais faire la mienne, et puis, et puis roule. Je me pose la question sur euh, est-ce que je continue seul sur mon 100 km? Donc j'attends ma femme et euh, je vis cette aventure avec elle, euh, quitte à renoncer euh, à tous mes entraînements, tout ce que j'ai mis en place. C'est une histoire d'une vie, quoi. on a partagé tellement de choses ensemble et euh, que j'ai envie de partager ça avec elle. Puis au bout d'un moment, dit, je me suis dit, oh, ouais, l'aventure c'est la sienne, elle a toujours été là pour moi, elle me supportait et j'ai dit, ouais, bon. Laisse tomber ta médaille, ta quatrième médaille, il y en aura d'autres, il y aura d'autres courses. Et c'est là où en fait je me suis mis un peu à pleurer, vider mon sac euh, intérieurement. Et j'ai dit allez, j'abandonne et, et je fais demi-tour, je suis allé la récupérer et, pour, pour l'aider, pour qu'elle finisse, euh, qu'elle arrive au bout de son but. I can't cool down. Shit. That's Liz. I think that, and I think that says it all for the ultra runner. That's that's what it's about. It's about 
pushing, pushing your limits, testing your limits, and then proving that you can do something that you didn't believe you could do. So that's why I want to come back next year. The wind. And the very soft sand. A hot wind. seems to be so little oxygen. I was feeling very strong and I, th I thought to myself, this is going to be my year. I'm going to get a very good time this year. And as time passed and the conditions got worse and worse, it wasn't a question of a good time, it was a question of finishing. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I'm feeling very guilty that I didn't push myself a little harder. But um, it's a good reason for me to come back next year. Unfinished business in the desert. It's such an amazing experience. Life-changing, honestly. I don't think that there are many desert ultras out there that could compare to this, but I do think you need to be mentally really tough. I don't think you need to necessarily have run an ultra before, but I, I think um, you need to prepare for some intense weather conditions. But I mean, overall, like the race itself was so well organized. You felt really supportive. Like if anything went wrong, you know that someone's gonna be there in two seconds. And I think that is also really important in this type of race that you just, you feel like the support is there. And I would absolutely recommend it to anyone. But I do think that Anyone who does the Ultra Mirage needs to be mentally ready to, to push through some intense conditions. Incredibly harsh environment. You know, I'm like a soft English guy, you know? I, <laughs> I grew up in great luxury in England. And then, you know, you come to the desert and you're put in these, this situation which is very, very extreme. And yeah, you learn a lot about yourself. The contrast is amazing. So yeah, that's I guess I like this race particularly because it is so hard and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to giving it another go. But as I said yesterday, I thought my racing career was over, <laughs> but now, yeah, <laughs> I'll be back. I think for anyone who is thinking of coming to Ultra Mirage, what I can say is when you run the Ultra Mirage, it's, you, you don't come somewhere in the desert and you run, you take a medal and a nice t-shirt and you leave. You're going to be joining a family. You're going to make friendship. You're going to become very close to people you never thought you'd be close to. What I love about the Ultra Mirage, one of the features which was very important to me, is I want it to be an equal race. It doesn't depend on your gender, on how much money you have in your bank account, about you know, your, your school degree, or if you went to university or not. It does not matter. Because the Ultra Mirage reduces you back to your human stage. You're a human and you're pushing through. You're pushing through your own boundaries. So what I want to tell people who want to join is they will join a family, they will join a community, and this race will change them forever.